Hi guys, Dane and Biggie here, there he is, and today I'm going to be doing two reviews in one. These are the first two books that I reread for the 2019 rereadathon. So I'm going to start here with Attack of the Mutant by R.L. Stein, and then in a little bit I will talk about the second book which I reread, which was The Lair of the White Worm by Bram Stoker. So I'll read you the blurb on this one quickly. Skipper just loves comics, especially when they're about the mass mutant, an evil supervillain who's out to rule the universe. So when Skipper finds a building that looks exactly like the mutant secret headquarters, he has to go inside. Soon Skipper finds himself in big trouble. Didn't anyone ever tell him not to mess with a supervillain? What's interesting about this is that I actually don't like superhero stuff and I never really have, but I did always used to enjoy this. This is actually probably my favorite Goosebumps book. Part of it being that it was one of the first Goosebumps books that I had, but also I used to have nightmares about the mass mutant as well. So I. In a weird way, I look back on it with this sort of, oh, what's the word, like, um, nostalgia almost. A little bit of nostalgia for the nightmares it used to give me. Now, with my rereads, I always do rereads by listening to audiobooks, and this one was no different. With this, I did find a few problems in terms of the character voices and the narration weren't so hot, and it kind of annoyed me quite a bit. It was all very American as well. And I was wondering for a little while if it was an abridged version, but I don't think it was because it is quite a short book. It only took me an hour and 20 minutes or so. I'll buy then, cat. And so the process of rereading this by audio actually wasn't as good as it has been when I've reread it just in physical form. Now, obviously, this is designed at kids, not adults, so there's a certain amount of leeway there. And I think also with the audio, because of the voices, I started to zone out a little bit. What I do like about this one, in contrast to a lot of the other Goosebumps books, that they all seem very predictable and also the world seems very fixed in place. It feels as though there's nowhere they can go other than where they are, whereas in this, it's almost the other way around. You get this sense of this huge world that they all live in and most of it is spent in the Mass Mutants lair. So I thought that was quite interesting. I also like that towards the end, we have this big showdown and basically Stein uses a bit of a callback so he takes something that the character learned earlier on in the book and then he's able to use that to outwit the villain and there are also more twists than I would say there usually are in a Goosebumps book again particularly towards the end of this we have this supporting cast of you know villains and heroes and what I liked about that is that it kind of pokes fun at a lot of the tropes that really annoy me about superhero books and superhero movies. So I kind of respect that as well. And I do think this would be a great book to give to a kid who's maybe really enjoyed superhero movies and, you know, you're trying to encourage them to do more reading. Definitely worth giving this one a go. It is quite creepy. But it's also, it's just pretty good, you know. I think if you'd have asked me before my reread what my rating for this would have been, I would have given it a, said it was a 5 out of 5. But on hindsight, it is a 4 out of 5. And if I read this for the first time now, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5. It's just that nostalgia-based sort of thing that, that, that makes me increase its ratings. But there are certainly plenty of Goosebumps books out there in the series. And uh, so this one, I would say, kind of prioritise if you're into, you know, Marvel and DC and all of the endless numbers of superhero movies that are coming out at the moment but if you want something that's more I guess just more typical horror and stuff you want something like say cheese and die or maybe the monster blood books or you know piano lessons can be murder all those like I mean the whole series it just has a sort of special place in my heart because I I grew up with these books and this one in particular which is why I chose to reread it so that in a nutshell is what I have to add really I was going through and I was trying to make notes while listening to the audiobook and all of my notes are just about how annoying the character voices were so again Unless you're a child, if you're a child the audiobook might work, but if you're an adult it's just going to grate on you, like watching kids TV. So, um, and like not even like Scooby-Doo or something like that, just, you know, some modern show that you've, you've not heard of before. But yeah, it's worth reading and I'm going to leave it at that because I have The Lair of the White Worm to review now. So I'm going to hand over to Dane from the past and he's going to finish off these reviews and, uh, and hand over. And then I will, yeah, I will see you next month hopefully because my March reread is going to be The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which was my uh, most loved book of the year last year. So we're going to see if it holds up to that. So yeah, over to you past Dane. Okay, so the Lair of the White Worm now, just so you realise, I'll be illustrating this with my copy of Dracula's Guest and Other Weird Stories by Bram Stoker, which does include the Lair of the White Worm, it actually makes the bulk of the book. And this is basically a story sort of similar to Dracula in many ways, because there's also this sort of, the investigation between, sort of the link between 
I guess, evil and women. I guess that goes all the way back to Adam and Eve and original sin and, and all those ideas. So basically here we have um, sort of a rich country woman who is actually a massive snake in disguise. So if you've ever heard of uh, David Icke, I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, he has a theory that the royal family and various leading politicians are actually lizards in people suits. And it's kind of similar to that. Uh, very entertaining though. So um, I'll read you the blurb actually before we get started. So the work of Bram Stoker, best known for his world famous novel Dracula, delights in the strange and the macabre. This new volume contains a collection of spine-chilling short stories published by Stoker's widow after his death, with the addition of The Lair of the White Worm, an intriguing story of myth, legend, and unspeakable evil. So that's what you're going to get with The Lair of the White Worm. Now, one of the good things about it is it is public domain as well, so I actually listen to a LibriVox audiobook of it, as I sometimes listen to audiobooks for rereads. I will link below to where you can check out that audiobook. And I made some notes as I went through it, so I'm going to go through those with you now. All right, so let's start with this quote here, which goes, uh, Where we are going is in the real heart of the old kingdom of Mercia, where there are traces of all the various nationalities which made up the conglomerate which became Britain. So Mercia is part of England or the United Kingdom from, you know, over a thousand plus years ago. And the ancient capital of Mercia was a place called Tamworth, which is where I was born and grew up. And Tamworth Castle was used as like a bastion for that. Also, if you've ever watched like The Last Kingdom on Netflix, SHIELD WALL! then you've probably heard them talk about Mercia. So yeah, fun fact for you there. I liked how they used mongooses to take down the snakes, because again, the lair of the white worm, basically the evil in this. If you think of Dracula is associated with maybe bats and wolves, the evil in this is associated with snakes. So there's a lot of use of mongooses throughout this. Mongoose, mongoose. Uh, fair few uses of the N-bomb. It was quite racist in parts. Again, it's a product of its time. Having said that, it was a bit weird listening to it as a modern uh, reader, especially because I was hearing other people read it aloud. And so I was just hearing random people drop M-bombs. I mean, you can kind of see this attitude is illustrated in this quote here. Do not bring your African servant with you as his face frightens the girls. After all, he's not pretty, is he? Then we have uh, another quote. The law doesn't concern itself much with dead. So I wrote here, the story is still good, but the racism grates. And the idea of the stereotypical avaricious Negro also felt very wrong as well. So. This is the thing though, the law didn't concern itself much with dead black people because, oh well they're black so they must have been stealing, obviously, that's how it works, isn't it? It's like this woman was like, oh no, his black face will haunt me in my dreams, I will never see the light again. It's like, calm down love. And we had another reference as well that uh, because the enemy is a woman, being feminine, she will probably overreach herself. Ooh, I don't know if that would fly now, Bram, I don't know if that would fly now. However, Despite this, and despite the fact that going on Goodreads it has a bunch of really bad reviews, I still really like The Lair of the White Worm. I actually read this, this was for the February rereadathon prompt, which was um, uh, to reread an, an underrated book by a well known author. And I think The Lair of the White Worm is underrated, and I still stand by that. I think for my rating, I would give it a 4 out of 5, maybe a 3.5 if you listen on audio, because I do think you should just just read it because you pick up more of the finer details. But if you can get past the kind of racist and colonialist attitude of the time it was written in, you've actually got a pretty decent story there. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you if you like Dracula, you'll, you probably ought to give Lair of the White Worm a, a go, but um, yeah. That's all I have to say on the matter, so um, yeah. So there we have it. That's what I have to update you on for the rereadathon so far. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought about them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.